Between Jenna Marbles leaving YouTube and Blair White's recent accusations against Jeffree Star, it seems as if a new YouTuber is getting cancelled almost every day. The most recent cancellation has been the grandpa of YouTube, Shane Dawson. A bunch of old videos with offensive jokes and skits have resurfaced, and they began to circulate on Twitter which upset a bunch of his fans, other creators, and even celebrities. This got me thinking that even though YouTubers who are cancelled feel the negative effects of losing followers and sponsorships, is there ever an instance where a YouTuber can't bounce back after after the internet cancels them? Is there any hope that Shane Dawson can recover from this? from the green room and I'm a content creator on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. As much as I can't help getting sucked in and watching all the videos about scandals, I notice that even as cancel culture becomes more and more prominent, none of these people's careers actually end up being canceled. Mm. Now that people have been on YouTube for over 10 years creating hundreds of hours of content, many of them inevitably end up posting something that triggers a scandal. But if we analyze any of the recent cancellations of big YouTubers, we can see that they've all managed to bounce back. For example, Logan Paul was one of the biggest cancellations on YouTube. But now, a couple years later, he's back with one of the top podcasts in the world. And right now, there's a bunch of drama returning between Tati Westbrook, Shane Dawson, and Jeffree Star, but Shane Dawson is the main one being canceled right now. The old videos that are resurfacing of him are extremely offensive and inappropriate. Even though other YouTubers have found success after content being exposed like this, Shane has multiple videos with this type of content. They began circulating on Twitter with multiple social media stars berating him, and major celebrities have also started to publicly call him out. After seeing one of Shane's inappropriate videos featuring Willow Smith as a child, the Smith family has tweeted out against Shane saying that they were disgusted by him. Shane made a standard apology video in response, but it seems as if it hasn't changed anyone's negative opinion of him. Yesterday, TubeFilter published an article announcing that YouTube suspended monetization on all three of Shane's channels. Shane, Shane Dawson TV, and Shane Glosson, which have a combined total of over 34 million subscribers. Although the length of his demonetization is indefinite, it's not permanent. YouTube has done this before with creators such as Logan Paul and Jay Station who have since been monetized again, so it's unclear how long this will last for Shane and what lasting effects it will have. I also saw that Shane will have other financial consequences. Target is removing his books I Hate My Selfie and It Gets Worse from its stores, and Morphe has removed Shane's collaboration with Jeffrey from its website. We can compare Shane's cancellation with Jenna Marbles and see the extreme difference between the two. Although Jenna has posted offensive content in the past, her apology video was much better received, which is probably because she's demonstrated a huge change in her behavior over the years, and she's even decided to stop posting to her YouTube channel because she was so upset with herself over it. Shane, on the other hand, has posted much more outrageous content over the years, and he continues to show support to other creators who've done so as well. It shows that people are a lot more likely to forgive someone who's made a mistake and owned up to it and corrected their behavior, but years of posting offensive content will lead to actual consequences. Not only is this surprising because Shane is one of the biggest, most popular creators on the platform, but it's especially ironic ironic that his apology backfired considering that Shane is the one who usually does a series with someone who's cancelled. It'll be interesting to see if any of these people end up speaking up for Shane and to see if he tries any other method of damage control. As I was doing all of this research, I took the time to reflect on myself. I do believe that cancelling people is not always necessary because some people really do learn and grow from their mistakes and also sometimes the receipts exposing people turn out to be mm -hmm. fake. However, there are some people that continuously show problematic behavior and they seem to thrive off of bringing other people down. And as a creator, it's important to take lessons from these situations. We should really be mindful of the content that we post. And even if you think something is just a joke, think about how it might affect other people and if it's appropriate to post to the world online. We know that it's human nature for everyone to make mistakes in life, but the important thing is to truly own up to it and admit your mistakes when you've done something wrong. Another thing to consider is why we're so quick to forgive some creators for their problematic behavior, while other creators we think should stay canceled. It's important to keep in mind that not everyone shows their true personality on YouTube and just because we enjoy watching someone's content doesn't make them a good person. I know from personal experience how addictive it can be to watch this type of content, but it's important to realize that every view and click you make goes to supporting the creator who made that video. Just like how you can choose to spend your money at different places based on what you support, you can choose where your views and watch time go to. I hope you found this video interesting and learned something from it. If you did, make sure to subscribe to The Green Room for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!